This is my book, Revealing the Evolution of an Artist's Soul. I have 72 images of uh, my art travels and family. It's basically a book of uh, about going from poverty to success. Also, uh, all the little adventures in getting to that success. My working my way through college, and I traveled to Europe when I was 19. I saved up, and fortunately, I was able to travel on three dollars and seventy-five cents a day. Got to go to museums in France and Germany and Holland and that inspired me for changing my major from science to art along with just giving me such help, heartfelt love for other countries like when I heard something on the news I just I felt empathy for those people in those countries, so I really believe traveling is so important for young people. And I'd like to read some of the quotes on the back, and then I'll, I'll make some comments. Uh, in 1984, I met Swami Rana. After hearing my story of escaping poverty, managing an education, or becoming a dedicated artist, and yet having a business at the same time, thereby becoming financial independent, she encouraged me to write this book, which has turned into a spiritual journey trilogy. Swami Radha was the first yogi, yogini I met, and uh, her, her voice was just so filled with love, and when she spoke, um, it just opened up my heart, and of course, we're attracted to people who open up our hearts. So anyways, um, and many times when I was talking with Swami Radha, she told me that she had so many students who were artists, but they were so passionate about their art that they didn't want to work at another job or take care of themselves. And she wanted me to show that uh, you could still follow your passion in your heart, but it's important to let, earn a living and take care of yourself, which I was truly grateful that, you know, I steadily progressed. I, I was born in the ghetto, and I, I, I tell my story of that, the joys and the pain of uh, my first nine years in the ghetto and then um, we moved to what I called the white neighborhood but <laughs> uh, you know it, it still had its stuff and we were still uh, my mom married my stepdad but we were still poor I would say hey I got two dads and no shoes but um, anyways I didn't, I didn't take all of that so seriously. I worked when I got in high school, and I bought myself some clothes, and I saved up for this place called college, which I didn't have a clue where I was going. Anyways, I ended up in college, but I was studying science and math, even though there was part of me that just really wanted to do art and paint, but the teachers all through high school just told me to focus on the science and the math. And yeah, so I kept meeting artists in college and, and then I, I had what I call my type of identity crisis was, who the heck am I? I was dating a guy and <laughs> he, he broke up with me, you know, but I, I kind of, in that particular relationship, I think I was just so desperate to be in a relationship that I kind of... I liked everything he liked, and I forgot what I liked. For somehow, I, I, I got lost, and it, it, was, it wasn't that long of a relationship, but it, I guess it was one of those things that was meant to be, and it, it was so horrific for me when he broke up with me, and, but yet it was meant to be, and I, I questioned myself all one night. I didn't sleep, and it was like self-analysis, and I questioned, who am I? Who am I? Uh, I realized I always wanted to do art. I always wanted to paint, and everyone discouraged me. And so the next morning, I got up. I went to the art supply store, and 
I was really scared to be there. It was like just so foreign to me. And I bought paints and brushes and some little canvases and I started painting and then I went to the library and found this world of artists. And so all of the art world opened up to me. Anyways, before I tell you my whole story, let's get back to the jest of Swami Radha. Swami Radha, yeah, just wanted me to inspire artists to also earn a living and really honor yourself in some way or form. And the way I was able to take care of myself was uh, to be an entrepreneur and I, I was practical. I studied jewelry along with painting in college and then my boyfriend and I started a jewelry store and it, it was simple Native American Indian store in Southern California. It was at the end of uh, the fad. There was, there was a huge fad going on. Everyone bought Indian jewelry. It didn't matter what it looked like, the condition of it. But I was trained by my teacher to always uh, do everything with a sense of quality. So we started just buying really high quality pieces. They weren't necessarily expensive, but they were well done. And we built our business on that. And then slowly I added in diamonds and gemstones. And on my days off, I always uh, paint it and or, or took drawing classes sometimes after work I was so exhausted I didn't have any energy left but other times I did and I always had a little table set up and I would uh, do my art and my painting and my drawing so anyways um, uh, where was I going yeah so encourage all you artists out there to uh, do your best to have another career besides painting or art because it's such a, a difficult field. I've barely earned any money in my art field, but what it's done for me is it's filled my life with a joy Art gives your mind a focus, uh, a uplifting focus that isn't found in, um, it's, it's found in music and all the creative arts, but it's such a focus that it just gives me a lot of joy. It doesn't mean I'm not struggling because when I, when I'm painting a painting, it's, I want to, I just always want to go beyond where I've been. I want to learn a new technique. I want to just it's a self-expression we have a vision and we we want that vision to come through and so for me the artist is always learning experiencing going beyond where they've been Irene's passion for art enthusiastically inspires readers to realize the power of art its power to convey emotions to take us deep into our souls to make the world around us more colorful, to enhance our aliveness, and to awaken the ancient and sacred wisdoms within us. That's the other thing. Through exploring art, it helped me understand my emotions more fully, to be able to express them and see them, and to have a deeper understanding of myself through the symbolism and I use the art as an awareness tool and the, as a conscious raising tool. It helps me to know myself more deeply and to be aware of the world. And when I paint colors and then I go outside, colors become so alive. But it's just that they, there's an aliveness. It's like when a musician studies his instrument, the sounds become so alive. They're enhanced. You don't need drugs because everything becomes so alive. Through doing my art, I, I was pretty serious at first. I've always explored philosophy and other worlds. And in this first book, I'm a political artist. And in being the political artist, it, you know, certain things happen and it really upset me. I mean, I had a Dalcon shield and it scarred my insides and the doctor said I wouldn't be able to have children and and it was so painful the five years that I had it. And I, I'm lucky I didn't die. I didn't 
end up aborting a child. A, a, a lot of horrible things happen to women. And then another one that almost killed me was uh, rely tampons. So I did some pretty uh, powerful work that a lot of people were even scared to look at. And, and it was a time when things were being deregulated. So it, it just really, uh, Reagan was uh, president at the time and he was deregulating business so they could do what they want. And a lot of products were getting on the market that were hurting people, which still continues today. I mean, the drug companies have a lot of power, and they, they continue to get products on the market. And the sad thing was, a lot of times they take these products to third world countries when they're no longer able to do them here. Even after a company goes bankrupt, it's, it's, it's sad. So anyways, I, I was becoming heavy-duty political, but uh, my images started shocking me, and I, I wasn't sure... That was going to really raise the consciousness of people in the way that I, I wanted them to respond to my work. I changed my question from what are the problems to what are the solutions. And when I really contemplated what are the solutions to all the problems in the world, to any problem, it comes from the essence of love, universal love, a love beyond family, beyond sentimentality, beyond... It just, it comes from our hearts. And when we connect with our heart-mind, which is so real, solutions come that are so beautiful and so helpful for the world. So in my first book, I hope to inspire you to be on a, a creative path, to open up your heart to a creative path, to travel and experience joy in life, and to take care of yourself and have faith. I got myself into a lot of um, predicaments because, you know, I really wanted to travel and I was a little risk taker and... I hitchhiked across the country, so I really had to use my common sense to keep myself safe. And But the main thing was I was always praying. That prayer and the faith that I had angels around me or uh, the divine universe would keep me safe really did keep me safe. And so um, please check out my book in the link below. And I'll introduce my second book in the next video. Thanks so much.